When it comes to half-ton trucks, GMC has always been number two in the sales race compared to Ford at their F-Series. Now, about five years ago, the company introduced an all-new version of the Sierra. It's now in its fifth generation. And when I first had a chance to drive this truck, I was really impressed with the overall package. I thought it was a handsome-looking truck, and it offered a plethora of different engine options, including a wonderful diesel powertrain. However, when it came to the interior, this is where GMC Sierra was really falling behind. So for 2022, the company is introducing an all-new, fully refreshed model. And as you can see, this particular one here that I'm showing you is a new trim level. It's called the Denali Ultimate. It has some revised styling on the exterior. It has a revised powertrain lineup slightly, and the inside has been completely redesigned with far better materials and also far better tech. So today, GMC has actually brought me out to San Diego, California to drive this new truck. And the big question I want answered, is this new Denali Ultimate trim finally the Cadillac of half-ton trucks? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we talk about the exterior styling changes for the 2022 Sierra, I want to remind you guys what's powering this truck under the hood. Now, for 2022, GM actually dropped one engine. The base 4.3 liter V6 is gone. Now you can take a pick, your pick between either a 2.7 liter turbo four, uh, a 5.3 V8, a 6.2 V8, or the three liter turbo diesel straight six. The Sierra Denali uh, that you're looking at here has the 6.2 liter V8. This is technically the top dog engine. Uh, it makes 420 horsepower and 460 pound feet torque. This engine has cylinder deactivation. It's a pushrod V8. It's a small block V8. It's very old school, but it's also a very proven motor, and it also makes pretty good power. It still goes out through a 10-speed automatic transmission, and the Denali Ultimate trims come standard with four-wheel drive with a low-range transfer case. If you guys go for the new AT4 and our AT4X trim level, you can also basically get a lifted suspension with unique shocks uh, with locking front and rear diffs. That's for a different review. This is more of the street truck uh, built a model here, with, especially with the big 22 inch wheels. But in terms of fuel economy, this is kind of where the 6.2 falls a little bit short. It's still rated to get 15 in the city and 20 on the highway. If you guys want better gas mods, go for the turbo diesel straight six, which is actually gonna save you around $1,100. And you'll also save a pretty good chunk at the pump because it gets much better fuel efficiency. Uh, this truck uh, is still a very capable vehicle. It'll tow a maximum of 13,000 pounds if you guys have the proper max trailer tow package. And this is also a really big truck. It's relatively heavy. Uh, this one here, as it sits, weighs at just around 5,400 pounds. But let's go ahead and close the hood and talk about the exterior styling changes. You can see this one here being the Sierra Denali Ultimate basically gives you all the goodies. And if you stare at the front fascia, you're gonna notice the new grill. It's got kind of like this satin black chrome finish to the grill, which I really like because typically the Denali trims have a ton of chrome. It's overwhelming amounts of chrome. I really like how they gave it this kind of black chrome tint. You can see the GMC logo is now blacked out as opposed to having the red lettering. And then if you look at the headlights, you'll have to squint because the headlights don't look all that different, but you can see they are different. They are full LED design, LED low and high beams, an LED daytime running light and turn signal. You also still have LED fog lights down here. And it all makes for a really handsome looking truck. I still think that the Sierra is one of my favorites in terms of the exterior design and GMC basically made it look even better. Uh, there is still some chrome at the front with the front um, chrome tow hooks at the front along with the chrome along the side mirrors. So again, there is still some chrome on this vehicle to let everybody know that this is a Denali trim. Now looking around the side profile, if you guys want this trim, you're gonna have to choose it in this cab configuration. So you get four full size doors and you get a five and a half foot bed. If you guys want the longer bed, you're gonna have to step down to the other trims, but at 232 inches long, this is about the same size as the current generation Ford F-150 and the Toyota Tundra. This is basically uh, the size of a truck that most people like, especially if you wanna carry your family and have a relative useful bed. Now looking at the wheels, you can see this is a really interesting looking wheel. First of all, it's a 22 inch wheel that comes standard on the Sierra Denali Ultimate. Uh, it's riding on two 75 uh, 50 series uh, R22 Bridgestone street tires. These are an all season tire. And I really like the design because this is a blacked out wheel. It's got like a satin black look, but you can see the inner parts of the spoke are actually machined. There's like an outline where you can still see the design details of the wheels. Uh, GMC tells us that this was actually very difficult to do to design a wheel like this. And I applaud them for it because it's a good looking wheel design and it really helps this truck stand out because a lot of people don't like black wheels, but this kind of still shows off the shape of the wheel. And you can see here with the suspension, this one here also has adaptive dampers. You still obviously have an independent front, live axle at the back. GMC does not offer air 
suspension. This particular trim here has just over eight inches of ground clearance. If you want more, go for the AT4 trim, which will give you basically a two inch factory lift, which will help you again with off-road capability. Now looking around the rest of the side, you can see plenty of chrome here for the door handles around the window trim. I mentioned earlier the chrome on the side mirrors. It's got a turn signal repeater. Uh, you also see chrome along the power running boards. You can see they pop out. That's a standard equipment on the Denali Ultimate trim. The one thing this truck is missing, however, Pano sunroof. GMC is still not offering that. You still can't get it on the Silverado. That's a feature that you can get now on the, the new Toyota Tundra, a, a Ram 1500 or a Ford F-150. So I'm really sad to see that GM still is not offering that feature, which I think a lot of customers are going to want. And then looking over at the rear of the truck, you can see I struggle to find any differences here at the back. I, I think it's still a really handsome looking truck. You can see Denali is spelled out very boldly back here along with the GMC. Now this is again blacked out as opposed to having the red lettering. And then you can see the taillights. They look practically the same. They're a full LED design, uh, LED brake lights, LED turn signals. And you can see here at the uh, rear bumper, you have these well-integrated parking sensors, really nice looking dual outlet exhaust. Love the corner step here uh, to help you get into this vehicle. And then you can see here, this trim also comes standard with the multi-pro tailgate system, which means you can open the tailgate like a traditional tailgate. And you even have almost like a built-in little bed extender over here where you could like put some long pieces of wood back here. You can wedge it on the back of this. If you want to open the tailgate in a really interesting way, you can push this button here and you can see that opens up half of the tailgate where you can kind of use this as like a table or you can also flip this up and use it as a, a small bed extender, for example. And then if you want to do something interesting, you can kind of push the buttons in sequence and you can see the tailgate opens up here. You can open this down. You can see there's actually speakers built into here and there's also a little handle there but that will help you essentially get into the bed itself. So you can use the tailgates or the steps in the actual bed uh, or on the bumpers, or you can use it as a tailgate step in general. Now you can see this one here has the carbon uh, fiber uh, box. So you don't necessarily need a bed extent or a spray and bed liner like you would on some competitors. It makes the bed really strong and really durable. However, in terms of power features, you can see there is one 400 watt inverter in here. However, remember, keep in mind something like the F-150 offers 2,400 watts if you guys go for the pro power on board or up to 7,200 watts if you guys go for the hybrid trim. Um, but overall, you can see this five foot, uh, five and a half foot bed is very usable. You can easily fit stuff along the sides of it to you know wedge whatever it is you're carrying. And in terms of the payload capacity, this will carry a maximum of just over 2,200 pounds. So let's move on to the inside of the all new Sierra Denali Ultima. Now this was a sore point for the pre-refreshed pre model. So I'm glad to see that GM really focused a lot of their attention here on this interior. Now, first of all, those power deploying running boards really help uh, short people like myself step in. And as you can see, once I get into this truck, you're probably gonna notice the completely redesigned dashboard first. However, I wanna briefly talk about the seats because these, this is a new interior color option that you get on the Ultimate trim. It's called Alpine Umber. I love the way these seats look along with the two-tone in the interior. You can see you have the contrast piping here, contrast stitching. These seats are also heated and ventilated. They adjust in 16 different ways on both front seats. And you also have a massage feature that's standard on the Ultimate. It's also standard on the AT4 X trim, which I'll be driving tomorrow. Tomorrow. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk and you can see here, wow, the tech in this car is just hugely upgraded. Uh, here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see it's their current generation key fob. It's got push button start. Obviously it has the usual buttons for remote start. You can also open up the tailgate. You can see it has the GMC logo back here, although I'm surprised it doesn't say Denali. The Denali brand counts for like 25% of sales. The start stop button is right here, so it's pretty easy to find. And you can see when you start this vehicle up, the two screens here, you've got a 12.3 inch fully digital display here, which is a huge upgrade versus the last uh, Sierra Denali that I tested. And then you also have a 13.4 inch screen here, which runs their latest Android based operating system. It also has Apple CarPlay and wire or app wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Uh, this system here is pretty similar to the uh, GMC Hummer EV, which has a similar system here, which is a similar size. You also have a 15 inch heads up display, which also is one of the largest in the industry. And then you also have a fully digital rear view camera style, style mirror, which GM was one of the first to do this. You can see you can get rid of it if you like and just use a traditional mirror. This is all really high tech and really modern. But before we get into the screens, let me talk about the interior materials. Because first of all, the dash or the door panel here has a completely soft leather stitch area. It is only hard touch plastic right here, which I don't love. Uh, you can see there's plenty of ultimate badges here. And then the wood grain in this car 
uh, is called Paldeo. It's actually a Paldeo open pour, genuine wood. It even has laser etched of um, topography of mountains, of I think Denali Mountains, or uh, in the actual wood grain itself. It looks fantastic. It looks real. It feels real. This interior feels very high quality. The dashboard you can see also has some genuine stitching with contrasting uh, piping and contrast stitching. There's really even, even real leather over here. You can see that actually opens up to reveal a second glove box over there. Uh, which is really nice uh, hidden storage. You have some real metal trim, which has this kind of texturized look, which looks great. Um, the steering wheel, as you can see, uh, is the same steering wheel as the pre-refresh model. However, it looks like they've added their Super Cruise function, which is actually standard on this trim. It's optional on other trims. You can see here the Super Cruise is the same one that we've tested in the Cadillac pro uh, products. It allows you to basically use it while you're towing, and it also has automatic lane changes, which is pretty similar to uh, the Tesla's autopilot system that allows you to do the same thing. The steering wheel itself also has a power tilt and telescoping feature. It offers a good amount of adjustability. Uh, the window controls here on the on the driver's side, you can see front windows are one touch automatic. However, the rears are not one touch up. They're just one touch down. I think at this price point, they should have given us full one touch for all of them. The premium sound system in this car is a 12 speaker Bose center, uh, center point surround sound with these me kind of metal speakers. They sound great. However, if you're keeping score of the speaker count, uh, the F-150 and the uh, RAM offers about 18 to 20 different speakers. So that's something to keep in mind if you guys are true audiophiles. However, let's move over here to the center stack because this 13.4 inch screen is beautiful. I love how the graphics look. Uh, I also love how you can see there's your wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. The one thing I want to ding the system for is I can't actually expand this to take up the whole size of the screen. I think that's something that uh, they should give me the option to do, but you can't argue with the graphics and the resolution. It's very quick. It's very snappy. This is another area where you can kind of change out the cards to show whatever you'd like over here. You can even just kind of have it as a blank screen or a clock, or a clock screen. Going back to the home display, you can see there's all your usual widgets. It also offers the different trailering functions if you guys plan to tow. Uh, GM also offers like up to 15 different camera views and you can also see inside the trailer or see through it uh, based on how you have the uh, cameras set up and the wiring set up. So that's all really great. You can see going to the camera display here, it has a full 360 camera. It also has your different trailer views, your different side views where you can see if the tires are going to get hit. Um, you can also look up the trailer when you have it connected properly and look up the trailer uh, hitch as well if you're trying to hook up a trailer. That all works really well and it makes the GMC Sierra one of the best in the industry in terms of tech and it really brings them up to speed because remember the old system uh, was only eight inches and the dashboard looked like it was basically coming off of the previous generation. So this should have honestly came out when this truck first was released back in 2019. It took GM a little bit of time uh, but this is now one of the best in class interiors so I have to applaud them uh, for making this just so much better. And it also has voice commands where you can say things like, hey Google, tell me a joke. Why does Han Solo like gum so much? Because it's chewy. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't say a dad joke, but I just said, tell me a joke. It works really well. The voice commands work well because remember, this is Google. This is an Android op based operating system. And I'm really happy to see that uh, wireless CarPlay is here. So it makes me wonder where's Volvo's wireless CarPlay because they technically have a similar interface. But moving over here to this rest of the center stack, you can see lots of traditional hard buttons for the climate control. So I have dual zone climate control here. I have my ventilated seats, which work well. I have heated seats, a heated steering wheel. Uh, this is a piano black plastic, which is going to show fingerprints, as you can see. However, over here, you can see here are some of your buttons for your driver assistance, the parking tech. And you can see here, I can push this button here and it actually opens the windows down in all four in sequence. However, it only opens the window. I can't actually put the windows up. I have to use the switch over here on this side to put the windows up, but that's still a really cool feature if you guys just want to cool the cabin down pretty quickly. Uh, the shifter you can see is a new shifter this year. This controls the 10-speed auto. I put it into reverse. You push this little trigger. You can see it brings up the cameras. Push the trigger again and go into drive, and then push this P button to go to park. Your trailer brake controller is over here. You have lots of storage here for your cup holders, for your keys. You have two USB charging ports there. Your wireless phone charging pad is also over here. There was a time where GMC used to put it over on the center stack. You can see this is a nice little padded armrest here for the center console, and then opening this up, you can see you find more USB charging ports, a little bit of a storage LED lighting in there. You have a actual uh, household power outlet over here, which is nice. This is pretty deep. It's really easy to use. However, I do think that the F-150 offers slightly more space. So that's something to keep in mind if you're looking for covered storage. Uh, the glove compartment here you can see 
is a bin style. It's uh, damped but not lined with felt. Uh, overall, lots of storage. Uh, looking above me, you can see the Ultimate trim also includes very nice suede Alcantara on the headliner. Really nice leather stitching on the grab handles here. You have LED lighting as well for the map lights. However, if there's one feature that's missing above me, you can see it's got a standard sunroof. But uh, GMC still hasn't gotten on the bandwagon of Afri offering a panoramic sunroof. So I think that's something that they're truly missing out on. But overall, I'm really impressed with this cabin. It's roomy, it's spacious, it's full of all the latest and greatest tech. And GM Super Cruise is one of the best in the industry. So if you're looking for luxury, if you're looking for a Cadillac feel in the inside, this truck is definitely going to be for you. So now let's move on to the back seat of the Sierra Denali Ultimate. As you can see, when you open the door, that power deploying running board comes out and it helps short people like myself get into this truck. And if you guys want this trim, it only comes as the four door crew cab, which means you have a gigantic back seat. There's around 43 inches of legroom back here. You have the same beautiful umber, alpine umber interior, and the seats themselves are pretty versatile. You can see you can flip this seat up. There's some under seat storage back here, although it's not completely covered or there's no lockable storage, but it's pretty easy to do. If you're looking for a lockable covered storage. GMC actually has a clever solution here. You can open this up as you can see and you can put lots of things in here. You can hide things in here. It's not lockable but it's a clever storage solution that I actually haven't seen in any of its competitors. So I give uh, GMC props for that. Now getting into the back you can see at five foot seven I I can easily get comfortable back here. In fact, the truck is so wide, it's about 80 inches wide, you can easily fit three people across. In terms of the materials, you can see same as the front, full leather with real wood, nice beautiful stitching over here. You still have the metal speaker covers for the Bose stereo system. Here on the seat back, you can see, I love the detail here with the topography of Mount Denali and the actual leather itself with the contrasting stitching. You have cup holders here, you have heated seats back here, although some competitors offer cooled seats. So I'm surprised to see there are no cooled seats. You have rear seat air vents, you have two USB charging ports, which is nice. And then I love the flat floor here, uh, which lets you know three people across sit down pretty easily. And then if you wanna fold down this armrest, you can see if you just have plan to have two, there are more cup holders over here. It's a nice comfortable area. This window also kind of slides back. And then you can see here above me, because there's no pano roof, this actually might be a selling feature because of all the increased headroom without having that pano rank roof if you guys have tall friends. But as you can see overall, the back seat of this truck is very usable. It's partly the reason why these full-size trucks in America are so popular because you can easily fit uh, full-size adults back here. All right, so here we are driving the brand new 2022 Sierra Denali Ultimate. Now, in terms of the powertrain specs and the chassis and the suspension, this truck hasn't really changed too much, although they did add adaptive dampers for this model, and I'm noticing it right off the bat because even though we're riding on these massive 22-inch wheels, uh, this truck still has a pretty good ride quality. I'm impressed actually with how smooth the ride is considering how big these wheels and tires are. Uh, and it also feels very refined, but also somewhat old school. If you guys are looking for that old school feel with a traditional V8, you're gonna really like what GMC has to offer in this truck. The V8 makes really great noises. Uh, it pulls well, it has a quick shifting 10-speed automatic, which is uh, their design transmission that they kind of co-developed with Ford. And it all works fairly well in delivering uh, forward thrust. I put my foot down here, you can see responsive 10 speed and a good noise, lots of low end torque. I mean, if you guys don't like the sound of Ford's power or EcoBoost engine or power boost engine, um, or even the Toyota Tundra's V6, you're gonna wanna go with this 6.2 liter V8. Um, now, in terms of the steering, you can see it's a truck. I don't expect it to be super refined. Um, but it's precise enough, it's just a little bit slow. It doesn't give you much feedback, of course. Uh, but overall, I really like what uh, GMC is offering with the entire package. Obviously, this one here that we're driving is more of the street-oriented model. Um, you can clearly get the more off-road oriented version, the AT4X, which we'll be driving tomorrow. But most people who drive these trucks, they're gonna be driving them out on the road and they're basically going to be commuting to and from uh, their work or their office or their home or whatnot, but let's go ahead and see what we can do zero to 60 wise in this vehicle. It's in sport mode right now. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. <laughs> oh, my life together. <laughs> that was really aggressive. 6.2 seconds. That, that is actually going slightly uphill. So I want to try it again up ahead here, which we'll do. I mean, Sorry, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll try it. Let's try it again. Let's see what we can get. All right, ready, Rob? Really quick shift, smooth. 6.09 seconds. So that was actually going slightly downhill versus 6.2. So yeah, we'll say like around 6.1 seconds, which is pretty good performance. Um, the V8 really is the star of the show here with the noises it makes, but 
But yeah, I mean, you're gonna be paying for it at the pump at 15, 20. I'll be able to retest this truck for fuel economy when I have it for a full week to drive. Um, but I'm pretty pleased. It's a nice sound. It's got plenty of power. It's got good ride quality. Obviously, if you plan to tow and carry stuff in the back, it's going to be able to do that as well. The seats are also comfortable and supportive. I'm sitting here getting a massage right now, uh, which is nice. It was something that the GMs, the old truck was just lacking. Uh, and the tech also looks good. Love the new screens, love the heads up display. It's really easy to see. And then uh, I'm not going to get a chance to test out the Super Cruise today just because we're a little short on time, but I have tested it in a Cadillac Escalade. So be sure to watch that video if you guys want to see the Super Cruise in action or the GMC Hummer EV truck that we also filmed last month. But overall, the drive is quite nice. I would like to see them offer a hybrid powertrain at some point, but something tells me that GM may skip that when they introduce the all electric version of, the, of this truck within the next couple of years. So yesterday, Rob and I had very limited time to drive the Sierra Denali Ultimate. And as you can see on day two, GMC has brought us out to Anza Borrego Desert State Park with the AT4X. This is essentially GMC's version of the Silverado ZR2. And it is the most off-road capable gas-powered truck that they have in their lineup currently. Obviously the Hummer is at the pinnacle. Uh, but what makes the AT4X super special is the Multimatic DSSV dampers, the shocks. Uh, they are what is going to give this truck the uh, capability to go onto those high speed desert runs, which as you can see from how dusty it is outside, we are go driving through some sand right now. We have the truck in four high. We have it in its off-road mode in the drive mode selector. This truck does not have the sport mode that the, obviously that the Sierra Denali Ultimate had, but uh, GMC has also graciously aired down the tires to about 15 PSI for this soft sand. And I have to say, this truck just kind of eats it up. And the structure also feels really stiff. Uh, obviously, it's very bumpy out here, but you can kind of go around at like 15, 20 miles an hour and the suspension just kind of soaks up those bumps. I hope uh, you don't lose your lunch, Rob. <laughs> they told us to eat a light lunch, but uh, yeah, the... the <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> but the full-time four-wheel drive system in this thing works well. It's got locking front and rear diffs, which is a segment exclusive right now, a segment first, but we're not going to need them at this time. We will go out into a part of the trail later where we may end up using them, but uh, it's about 100 degrees out here in the desert. So as you can see, it's very dry. It's very hot. Very hot and sunny. Yes, very hot and sunny. So, but in this cabin, we're uh, enjoying a massage, the cooled seats, the comfortably air-conditioned cabin, and it's very nice. <laughs> yes, you forgot about the massage. I mean, what other truck allows you to get a massage while you're sitting out here? Well, depending uh, on your driving style. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could do this in a Range Rover too, but who'd want to do that in a Range Rover? All right, maybe see you never. <laughs> I burn to death. Don't burn. All right, so earlier Chevy proved that those uh, DSSV shocks really do a great job at absorbing the ruts out here on these deserty sand roads. However, the AT4 is more than just a high-speed desert crawler. Uh, it's got a little over 11 inches of ground clearance. These shocks also allow for up to Anybody else nine inches. Seats while <laughs> yes, their massaging seats are very nice. Nine and a half inches of travel in the front, 10 and a half inches of travel in the rear. We also have skid plates. I'm gonna switch to the terrain mode here for the drive mode. I'm gonna stay in four high, however. Uh, they said I wasn't required to go to four low and we're gonna go ahead and navigate this uh, really challenging looking wow you can see tons of art wheel articulation as you go through these rocks right here the truck also has lots of skid plates and rock rails on the side so i'm going to try listening to the spotters whoa all right i'm still in four high right now okay you can hear a little bit of scraping wow you can see the tires just dig their way right through that four-wheel drive system though doing its job wow and this is a, a really narrow passage that I don't think a, a Raptor or a TRX could fit through here because remember, this truck is only about 80 inches wide instead of 87 inches wide. Wow, it just made it look so easy. Holy moly. That's pretty sweet. That is uh, pretty sweet. <laughs> and there was a little bit of a scrape right there, but the, it was just the rock rails doing their job. But yeah, this truck just powered right through it and I didn't even have to put it into four high. That's incredible. Really, really amazing capability. 
All right, so for the last part of the trail, we are at this drop called Devil's Drop, and uh, my camera guy, or my editor, Rob, is getting out. I apologize for his hair looking so crazy. The uh, desert heat and the sunscreen in it hasn't really done wonders, and it almost looks like Albert Einstein. But we're going down this drop called Devil's Drop. I've put the truck into four low. I put the rear locker on, and I'm in terrain mode, and this is a very steep drop. In fact, I can't even see over the hood right now. So... I'm going to just drive straight down it, and this is going to really test out the suspension, the tires, the ground clearance. We're going to probably hit those rock rails a few times. And this is a 13 degree drop right now. Ooh, wow. I mean, the truck makes it look so easy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank God for those rock rails, right? Okay. And the tires are still aired down. Woo. <laughs> but you know what? Those rock rails are doing their job and we are just kind of going down this hill. Wow. <laughs> and I know it doesn't look all that scary on, cam on camera, but I, let me tell you guys, here in person, it's definitely a little bit nerve wracking. Wow. I mean, this truck has a little over 11 inches of ground clearance. I'm using every inch of those 11 inches, but the suspension has so much articulation, nine and a half inches in the front, 10 and a half inches in the rear. And then after, now that we've cleared going downhill, we're actually gonna go uphill. And this sand right here is very soft. So GMC has told me to continue going or continue some momentum because, uh, it can definitely get you stuck if you aren't continuing that momentum. And I'm also waiting for my, editor to find me <laughs> do I wait here <laughs> is this where they told me to wait I don't I wasn't oh sorry about that let me go ahead and do that <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> Sometimes when you're talking to the camera, you uh, lose track of what the directions are supposed to be. <laughs> All right, so before we go back up the hill, we have to go a little bit further down the hill, down the devil's uh, pit or whatever this is called, drop. It's called the devil's drop. And the sand here, as you can see, is pretty soft. They're directing me which way to go. So they told me to basically keep momentum as I go through here. I'm still in four low. And it is very, very hot out here. So kudos to uh, Rob for running around behind me with the camera, showing you guys the footage of this thing. <laughs> better pay him well. <laughs> you do all right. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run to the back of the top of the hill and get you coming back up now. Okay. Okay, uh, heading up in just a second, just waiting for my videographer to run up the hill to get the footage. <laughs> cool. All right, so I'll coach through going okay. up here, so. Just ran up this whole mother hill, Sophie, on as fast as I could. Now you're going to sit there at the bottom. Yes, I know. I've been ready. Thank you. All right, Love now we here. are going to go back up the hill. This time I have locked the front and rear lockers. We're still in four low. And remember, this is very softly packed sand, so I have to keep a little bit of momentum, but with these uh, front and rear lockers locked, it definitely makes it super easy for this truck to get up here. Truck one, you're clear to go to the bottom. All right, so now we're gonna go up this hill. Um, instead of, however, taking the hill that we went down in, we're actually gonna go stay to the left, and this is the final part of the Devil's Drop. And wow, does this look really scary. But uh, I guess I'm gonna go up this hill now. <laughs> and you can see I've got an audience of journalists literally watching me. I got my cameras on, so I'm still in four low with the front and rear lockers locked. Thank God for these cameras. And also this truck isn't as wide as other competitors, so it kind of just scoots up really easily. Don't want to get leave any paint on these rocks or hit anybody. Wow, literally just looking up at the sky, really depending on these cameras here. 
<laughs> this truck made it super easy. <laughs> Just make sure your front locker's off before you start turning. Yep. Uh, It'll be a lot easier to maneuver. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, even though uh, GMC doesn't like to say this is a Raptor, full-on Raptor competitor, it certainly has some amazing capabilities. And I've been doing all this while getting a massage. So, can't do that in a Raptor. You could have waited for me at the top of the hill there, so if you aren't... There we go. <laughs> I'm good, I got plenty in the truck, thanks. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> um, I have some bad news. That camera shut off somewhere in the middle, somewhere. I don't know when. <laughs> yes, you can rest now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> So about four years ago when I first had a chance to drive the all new Sierra, even though the interior was very lackluster, I was very impressed with the overall package. This is still one of my favorite looking trucks on the outside, made even better of course for 2022 with the improvements they made. The interior is really the star of the show, it's just far more appealing versus the previous pre-refreshed model. The infotainment system is now up to par. The luxury on the inside is now up to par. It literally feels like the Cadillac of the half-ton truck market. And of course, with all that space on the inside, you can easily use this as a family vehicle. If I'm gonna ding the interior, it's just lacking a panoramic sunroof. Come on, GMC, get with the program here and offer that panoramic sunroof. Uh, in terms of the engine, the 6.2 liter V8 offers plenty of power uh, and it also makes a great noise. It's a very traditional powertrain, so if you want a more traditional feeling truck with a big burly V8, this is still one of the ones you're gonna to wanna to choose along with its uh, Silverado platform. Right? Really my issue with the new Sierra and the Silverado is how expensive these trucks have gotten. Now, of course, you can still buy a base model of these for around $34,000, $34,800. The Silverado is actually around $800 cheaper. However, if you want this body style, the crew cab configuration with the short bed, that'll start at around $42,000. And from there on, it basically can get very, very expensive. In fact, we'll talk about the pricing of this because this is a new trim level. Compared to a standard Denali, the Denali Ultimate is easily $9,000 more expensive. A regular one is around 71. This starts at around $81,000. So really it's $10,000 more. That's if you guys go for the diesel engine. If you guys go for the V8, it's around $82,000. Add in the few options that this truck has, plus the $1,200 destination charge, and you're looking at a sticker price of around $85,000. I don't know about you, about you guys, but there was a time where $85,000 used to buy you a three quarter to one ton truck. So it's just crazy, the market we live in. Keep in mind as well, you can also buy something like the all electric Ford F-150 Lightning, which is also around $90,000. $80,000 if you go for a Lariat, which is an all electric truck. Now, of course, you can't really compare an electric to a gas truck, or can you? Because, of course, as you guys know, GM is coming out with their own electric version of the Silverado and the Sierra. We haven't seen the full production version of the Sierra uh, electric truck yet. We should be seeing that soon, but my money would probably go on that because I really like the style of this truck. And if you want something that's more traditional, it's obviously going to suffice. However, if you want something that feels even more uh, high tech, something that's all electric, just be sure to keep in mind that GM is going to be introducing an all electric version of this truck within the next couple of years. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.